Good evening, everybody. It is Tuesday, March 8th, 2022, 6 p.m., or rather just past, 6.04 p.m. right now, and it's time for prayer list prayers. Alexa, cancel. And that time she just turns off. You never know with Alexa. Um, so, um, I just got back from the dentist a little while ago. More on that after prayer list prayers. So that's a good thing. And move this out of the way here. We pray for our leaders in government, our President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris, as well as all members of the United States Congress. In California, we pray for our Governor Gavin Newsom and his family. In San Mateo County, we pray for all police, fire, and emergency personnel, as well as the Human Services Agency and the Department of Housing as well as for all county workers not specifically named. In South San Francisco, we pray for our Mayor Mark and for all members of the South San Francisco City Council. In San Francisco, we pray for Mayor London Breed and all members of the San Francisco Board of Supervisors. We pray for all of those suffering through homelessness at the present time, for all victims of COVID-19 and COVID-19 long longhauler syndrome, for abode services and life moves, for clergy suffering with addiction and chemical dependency. Reprobates. We pray for all ministries inside and outside of the church, for all clergy and all religious and lay leaders alike, especially our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Pope Benedict, Bishop Mark Handley Andrus, Archbishop Salvatore Cordelione, St. Gregory's Abbey, Three Rivers, Michigan. I just read the uh, Abbey letter today on the way to the dentist. And Brother Armand has uh, professed his solemn vows. He's been, uh, he joined the community and, uh, in uh, 2015. So congratulations, Brother Armand. For, um, we pray for Hospitality House in San Bruno for C Episcopal Church in South San Francisco and San Bruno, <clears throat> for the Diocese of California, the Archdiocese of San Francisco, for Reverend Patrick Driscoll, for St. Veronica's Catholic Church in South San Francisco, for the Reverend Deborah Hawkins, for Bishop Louis Jelano, For St. Bruno's Catholic Church in San Bruno, and for the Reverend David Grant Smith, the new Vicar of C. Episcopal Church. I still call Cesar Chavez Army Street, so he'll be the new vicar for like, you know, the next 10 years. You know. <laughs> now, the funny thing is, is that like, I have a habit of adopting old practices like that. Like when I, when I found out that was the case, I'm like, I'm gonna call it Army. Even though it was, you know, well, 
it, it, it had been a long time, I think, by the time I arrived that it had been Cesar Chavez. But I'm like, what do the old timers call it? They call it army, that's what I'm doing. So, but anyway, all right. I pray for all members of my family, my father Alex and my mother Cheryl, as well as Kara Masick, Erwin Rossmeyer, Joshua, Jesse, Ben, and Max, my brothers, Mark, Jesse, and Diane Darling, Bob Otaviano, Anna and Fieta Crumbie, Jocelyn Gerard, Donna Brown, and Diane Carlson. always liked people that have been around longer you know <laughs> the way they do things it comes with a lot you know not, there are exceptions definitely and they abound really but you know that age comes with it's uh, with experience that you know you can't get 65 years of living let's say in in 25 years it's impossible no matter how you know, no matter how smart the one is and how um, dumb the other one is, I mean, there's still something to be said for the experience of living a life and what you gain from that, you know? So, like, that's not something you can't rush it. It's, it's, I find that to be a value. That's why, you know, hear me bitch about, oh, there's so many old people in Congress. Good. <laughs> Some people have a problem with that. I'm like, you know what? Young people are too capricious. Sometimes I think, you know, but that can be, you know, stereotype too. We don't want to overemphasize that when it shouldn't be. Anyway, I also remember in my prayers tonight, as I do every night, uh, those members of my extended human family, I name here, beginning with Junior Irwin, Stuart Packman, Eric Mosness, Keegan Forbes, Michael Nold, Coulter and Rhiannon, Richard Simmons, Jim White, Andrew Marmelstein, Dave Maloney, Keith Watley, Jimmy Harder, Michael Zorns, Tony Vucetich, Aaron Rogers, Ruben Padilla, Travis Carpenter, Kurt Berry, Larry Burdett, Janine and Mike Jones, TJ Hostomsky, Drunk Phil, June, Ann and Sam, Lou and Gina, Peter Steeler, Daniel Hudson, Clifton Barrett, Rawl and Barbara Laborde, Mike Smith, Margie Burke and her family, Kyle Andrew Schofield, Laura and Lydia, Jason Hayes, Jack and Ramit and their family, Gino and his family, Charles Ratcliffe, Chris Reinhardt, Dustin Keast, Norma Leedke, Matthew Russian, Tyler Davis, Daniel Fonseca, Michael and Corey, Ryan, Dean Varchetto, Pat Ford, Tina, Keith, Alexander, Matthew Mustashkin, Kevin Johansson, the Republicano family, Tyler Jordan Lowe, excuse me, Tyler Smith, Charles and Kim Plyler and their family, Anita, David, Michael and his mother, Al, Cheeseburger, Kenny, Kendrick, Dylan, 
Charlene Myers, Jeffrey Marmelstein, Steve Buiza, Pacific, the Pacific, yeah, the Pacific Family Medic Medicine Clinic staff. And you know why I stumbled right there? Because Steve Buiza is sitting in the next room right now, waiting for me to finish prayerless prayers. He helped me today with laundry and getting to the dentist. Thank you, Steve. So anyway, though, uh, so I've outed you. Um, but yes, so there, there's that. Moving along. Um, Beth Lewis, Ken McCune, Bob and Alice Katz, Jen and Jesse, Steve Manini, Larry Lawton, Gabby Giffords, Jeff Henkel, Mark Zuckerberg and his family, John, Bill O'Reilly, Christopher Henning, Scott Akers, Debbie, George Jetson, Lil Kim, Gustavo Caldas, John Shuck, Greg Flowers, Rick Rivero, Andy Han, and Stephen and Bernadette Connolly. Last but not least, excuse me for a moment, I just want to grab a piece of scrap paper. Last but not least, we pray for the, uh, all of those that have passed on from this life inside and outside of the faith and fear of the Lord. What does that mean? Well, um, what it means is that, you know, often here in churches, then, uh, that they pray for people that have passed on in the faith and fear of the Lord, meaning that they were, you know, they had the fear of the Lord. They were God-fearing Christians, in other words. Well, I make a point that, you know, we pray for people that have passed on from this life inside and outside of the faith and fear of the Lord. So that's why I say that. That's what that means. Um, especially the holy souls in purgatory and the church triumphant. Definitely outside the faith and fear of the Lord. <laughs> um, as well as the repose of the souls Howard Connolly, Christine Baker, the Reverend and Mrs. Fred and Cheryl Merrick, Nick Lee, Mickey McGee, Keith Lloyd, James, Dustin Rasmussen, John Judicki, Anita Rossmeyer, Phil D. Martino, uh, excuse me, Phil D. Martino, Father Benedict Reed, Winfred and Marianne Johnson. Demetrius Fleming Davis, John Gotti, my grandparents on both sides, Jay Darling, Tyler White. Some time ago, um, I made a point to again explain why John Gotti is on the prayer list. And, you know, part of it is because it, it, it's John Gotti. Right? Like, I mean, who has that on their prayer list? You know, who has someone? And, and because, you know, and that does tie into it. Because, for example, like, you know, um, well, number one, right, we all need prayer. Okay? And um, sometimes I'm in the habit of, like, you know, if the Lord indicates to me, like, you know, someone we're discussing, um, and it could be anybody, like John Gotti on that day. And I was like, you know, the Lord kind of made me gave me the inclination to put him down, right? Well, beyond that, though, because other people don't know that, 
it does have that kind of like shock value when you hear that because who else, you know it's not like maybe it's another John Gotti you know what I mean and, but you know there isn't another John Gotti and then like I'm hoping that you know somebody would hear that and kind of wonder like why would he have him on there you know because it, it's kind of sad that you know uh, we're worried about the names we have on our prayer list you know like when that's the last you know what I mean everyone should be on there you know what I mean but like wouldn't it freak you out if you went into like a, a church on Sunday and during the you know the prayers of the people like they're reading out the memorials and like someone says Adolf Hitler wouldn't you like you know you'd look around and go where am I you know, you know it's just the white nationalist Catholic church or something like that you know like um, it is it's it's unfortunate but you know I, we're human and we think about those kinds of things you know and so that's part of the reason I keep it on there because it is a little you know weird and because he most certainly needs them as much as anyone else um, so there you go and Ron Popeil everybody prays for Ron Popeil so that's in, in no need of an explanation there um, moving along Tyler White Tyler White I also explain who he is from time to time and the reason he's on there is because I found out he's a, a, a gay porn star from Rhode Island who committed suicide I'm also from Rhode Island and um, it was just a story that I was kind of moved by and I put him down there you know Rhode Island is a small estate and uh, being gay and having done God I've, you've seen me in all, in all kinds of porn no I've never done porn but like both being gay and being from Rhode Island you know I automatically we share a, a similar experience of uh, Of growing up in a way I guess you can say right you know some, um, so for that I don't know anyway moving along and that's another thing I, I do make a point of talking about Tyler White because you don't hear that in a Sunday in a church you know what I mean no one's gonna do that I mean they'll, they'll even put some on there but they certainly hope you know it's not a well-known porn star because you know what I mean they would want it to be anonymous but I want to draw attention to it specifically you know there's nothing to be ashamed about you know um, I mean there's already already so much baggage with you know with sex work and pornography that like we don't need to shame people about that you know um, John Oliver <clears throat> did uh, either the most recent episode or the one before it a, a great episode on sex work and uh, I took the time to watch it. He's, he's always funny and informative, and it was uh, it was worth the time as always. Priscilla Edison. Not Tom, Westinghouse would kill me, God forbid. Um, Bob Dole, Betty White, Bob Saget, Harry Reid. that long pause would piss off some people in a conservative congregation wouldn't it <laughs> and the funny thing it was sort of Seinfeld like it wasn't intentional because as does happen at moments like that you know you pause and then the Lord directs your mind somewhere else you know what I mean and you kind of like it was one of those It'd be a, a total uh, 
total Seinfeld style dilemma for something. Um, yeah, I'll tell you this right now. When Mitch McConnell goes, I'm going to give him even. I'm going to give him more than all the Democrats, just to save myself. But no, he's <laughs> um, Adolfo, Adolfo called us, Bill Brown. The Mariposa family. The Mariposa family. I was going to talk about this the other night. I sat for um, what felt like several minutes at the end there, not saying anything and deciding whether or not the Lord was going to have me speak about what was going through my head or not. You know, um, for my part, I try not to. You know, I try not to force it. Because it's not going to go well, you know. If I don't feel moved to uh, to speak, then you know I don't try to fight it. Um, but the Lord doesn't have, you know, the Lord isn't that easy with things. You know, He wants you to like oftentimes work for it and you know sweat over it. So like, so it felt like that. It, I was like I was working for it anyway, right? And um, the thing about that, you know, I everybody, of course mean something on this list sometimes there are things or aspects about people or situations that really stand out to us you know they kind of like something about our personalities just finds intrigue and uh, a situation like that where an entire family is taken at once you know this mother uh, a young family too you know um, I don't think they, they were definitely in a younger than 40 and they had and the kid was like le under two years old and uh, they went out for a hike in Sonoma I think it was and um, didn't plan for the you know didn't plan for what they were in for that day and, and brought like far less water and all died they try uh, on, on the trail not even that far away I mean it's just amazing. They tried to reach people. Cell phone service is bad in my area, right? Anyway, so let's get beyond this. And, and the thing that wows me about it is also like God's plan for people, you know? Um, this is an axiomatic thing for me. You know, I understand that people, you know, my friend Steve doesn't believe in God, I don't believe. And so like for, you know, I'm sure when he hears God's plan, it's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, whatever. And I, I get that. I totally understand that. I mean, let's face it. In order to accept the idea of God's plan, you have, you know, that means that you've accepted a lot of other stuff that maybe, you know what I mean? That, whoa, maybe isn't true for you. Um, but I can say God's plan. Like, I'm like, yeah, definitely. It's, it, I, I won't debate it with other people, but I am as certain of that, that fact as I am my own name. And that only um, is something I can claim is true for me. Um, more recently in my life, you know, that was not a part of, of most of my years of, of Christian faith at all. Like, uh, uh, you know what I mean? Um, the experience of God I have today is, by comparison, like I don't know monochrome to like technicolor you know um, I mean it's crazy it is like wow like holy shit I never thought I was going to have that kind of proof before I died that God like you know what I mean like and uh, so anyway so discussions have got the, you know, the reality of God's plan is like oh yeah that's, that's a given so when I look you know looking at situations like the Mariposa family that has a whole different meaning you know when you know there's a God when you know not just have like faith but like when you know you've got all the proof you need let's put it that way and I'm saying I'm being deliberately vague because I'm not trying to, to, to start a case for God against you know to make to make it to anyone else um, but I got all the proof I need and God has ensured that you know a lot of you will not believe me because it's I guess not fun that way but, uh, but you look at that, you know, a situation like the Mariposa family, and it takes on a completely different meaning, you know, or at least more, you know, more meaning than it had at the very least, right? Like, 
what was that about? Your, you know, your, your intention was to just create this young family, just start it out, and just kill them in the desert one day. Like, for what? Well, like, hey, well, maybe, maybe many people love them. They, you know, they died young, but they touched the lives of all the people around them in a very special way. I'm, I'd be like, well, yeah, that's cool, but like, <clears throat> that's like, you know, I don't know. I mean, that certainly isn't that, a, no one's going to say that's not enough, because you're kind of like, well, of course that's enough, you know, but it's like, but from your perspective, God, you know what I mean? Isn't that kind of like using, like, people, like, like, you know, from central casting, like, we just need a few people to live in the house on Jones Street, whatever, they're going to be the family that gets killed, you know, on this date or whatever, you know, because we need to have that in a world that has all the stuff that we have. I, you know, it's, we don't know, but when you know that there's a plan, the idea, you know, there's a lot more to think about and a lot more to appreciate. And a lot more not to understand and be, and be like, God damn it. But um, there it is, folks. So anyway, um, I want to mention two things before I sign off here. Three things, because the first of them is going to be the closing prayers before I forget. Um... O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The next thing, something very special happened this morning for the first time ever. Someone else ate breakfast at my table with me for the first time since I moved in of food that I made. It's never yet happened. And I, you know, Steve said, oh, you know, I'm not that super hungry. And I said, you know, you'd be doing me a huge favor because no one yet since I've moved in here has been my guest for any kind of type of meal. So, um, and that's a big, you know, you know, us Christians, that's a big, big freaking deal to us. So, that, uh, yeah, it was, it is, it's, it's nice. Um, now the dentist, uh, I decided, you know, after hearing the price, I went on Google, you know, WikiHow, I can do the root canal myself, so I'm gonna, you know, no, I'm just kidding. Um, things are good, I got the cleaning, and, uh, I need to see another dentist, as I mentioned previously, about a filling that fell out that I'm not going to them because I can't afford to pay out of pocket. So I have to find a Medi-Cal dentist. See, I'm, I'm basically like trying to pay out of pocket for the cleanings because I like my old dentist's office and their work better over any Medi-Cal dentist I have either heard about or experienced myself. It's really a pathetic situation, honestly, you know? Um, that's the word to use when you just want to be honest. You're not trying to insult anybody. It's not good, you know. Um, I'm not going to get into that, but having had private health insurance for most of my life and good private health insurance uh, from my partner's um, retirement from the phone company, where he worked for Pacific Bell for like almost 30 years or whatever, 20, 20 something years, 20 almost 30, I don't know, between that. So you get a good retirement. So we had great health coverage by AT&T, always. And um, now, now I see the difference. It's like, oh my God, woo. It feels, it literally feels like having like, once having like the red carpet, which it didn't feel like that. It just felt like going normal, going to the doctor's office. And I've had to tell doctors, you know, I'm not gonna get specific here, but I've actually had to mention to, uh, to office staff that in response to their behavior that I've never in my life experienced this at a doctor's office before from the staff. Like, I mean, you gotta be kidding me. Really, you know, unprofessionally, anyway. Uh, yeah, it, it's, it's crazy down here in the dog with the dogs. You know what I mean? It, it, it's sad. Um, I wish it could be different, but from what I can hear, what I, from what I do hear, um, this has a lot to do with uh, the administration 
of Medi-Cal and how payments are handled and how much the payments are. It, it's, it's more headache than anything, you know what I mean? Than doctors, so they don't want to take it. I mean, it's, they, I guess they get less money and they don't get it, you know, it's, it takes longer to get and there's just no good reason to, you know? And there's others that, you know, I, that was just going through my head. There's other stigma that there is, you know, there's a stereotype and there, there are valid considerations around that, though. And I'm sure that does play a part. You know what I mean? Some people have an idea of how they want their waiting room to look like. You know what I mean? Like what they want that filled up with and what they want it to look like. Um, and, you know, that that is going to make a big difference, too. You know what I mean? It, it, it is. And some people, I think I think it's their right to be concerned with that. You know what I mean? It may not always be the most noble thing, but you know what? There was a time when I was very concerned with how attractive, you know, the the most, um, you know, the people, the friends that were visible on my Facebook page, like the, the most attractive people, you know what I mean, were up there. But yeah, you know what? Like, people do, we do those kinds of things. You know, God it makes us uh, inclined to be shallow sometimes or, you know, um, so, hey, for what, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to fault a doctor because, I mean, we all have the right to sort of, we have an image of, like, the people we want to serve. That's also God's image, too. But, like, at the same time, yeah, that's probably there. Um, anyway... COVID-19 has made me so brief with many things that when I have a break from it and I'm talkative, the Lord and I think I should take advantage of it and say things. So there it is. I love you all. Remember to brush your teeth, to floss, especially and most especially to say your prayers. And I'll see you in the next video. Good night and peace. Bum 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 bum.